Travis Wayne Goodsell. I uh, was I finished the email of the summons. It's all set, ready to go. Uh, I found out that uh, Gmail allows me to set a time for it to be delivered. So it's all set, ready to go for Yom Kippur. So, uh, if that is to be the fulfillment of the sign in the heaven, so be it. If God has something else in mind, so be it. But I've done my part. And so that's what this video uh, will discuss. Is that uh, in the Joseph Smith translation, because remember, I'm anti-Mormon, not anti-Joseph Smith. In the Joseph Smith translation, which is actually supposed to be the revision, and let's see, Joseph Smith translation. Why is this under? Is it under? Should be under study aids. Pretty sure I clicked on it. Alright, so we need to go to 12. Alright, so the additional information that Joseph put in here, uh, possibly Sydney, because he was in on it too, is uh, the phrase, in the likeness of things on the earth. So he says, and there appeared a great sign changed from wonder which yeah exactly in heaven in the likeness of things on the earth signs in the heavens are not just a pretty unique rare event or a conjunction they have meaning the ancients understood this meaning they wrote their stories uh, ascribing anthropomorphic characters to the planets and to the constellations so that when the planets would move even the Sun and moon would move through the different constellations it would tell bedtime stories and that's the origin of bedtime stories the first scriptures scriptures are bedtime stories and uh, <coughs> and so uh, the Egyptians uh, took this to art. Uh, they knew astronomy. They knew it very well. They knew it exceedingly well. Far beyond the capability of our current uh, astronomers. Uh, and just to let you know, they knew the date of the total solar eclipse and where it occurred many millennia ago many millennia ago the story from which it comes from is understood by Egyptologists to predate the current oldest record we have that's how old this story is well known and they were accurate in astronomy before we know of the oldest records of Egyptian so if YouTube weren't being but and allowed me to uh, put in uh, not copyright violation material I would use a clip from Stargate where uh, <coughs> Daniel Jackson uh, played by James Spader is uh, having a lecture uh, in the beginning of the show trying to convince a whole audience of scholars and Egyptologists and professors and such uh, that uh, the Egyptian language predates 
what we currently know. And uh, he's right. The Egyptian language does predate what we currently know. Because you don't just all of a sudden have a formalized hier hieroglyphic script all set, ready to go, instantly on your very first try. That's not how it works. It has to develop over time if that's how it was done. And so, yes, thus you get the space aliens coming to Earth and teaching the primitive humans how to read and write, and so that's one theory that Stargate used to tell their story with. But uh, the other one is more of uh, the realist version of science in which it started with a building of a language over time and then turning it into a written language and, and then eventually somebody organizes that language into a formal system. But uh, regardless of however it was developed, it's very clear that it's older than the oldest document that has been found, which are the pyramid texts. And there are older uh, uh, materials, we'll say, uh, that do have writings and carvings on them, but they're not a full documented text, like the pyramid text. So, uh, the Narmer palette, for example, uh, uh, that's a, a very old uh, uh, palette, but uh, it doesn't contain an actual text. It is translatable, though, remember? I'm the one who deciphered Egyptian picture glyphs. The Narmer palette is full Egyptian picture glyphs. It's telling a story. It's providing us translatable material. Egyptologists have not caught on to that yet. So, yes, I can translate the Narmer palette as well. Not just the Joseph Smith facsimiles. And so this, this concept of signs in the heavens being in the likeness of things on the earth was something that the Egyptians lived in accordance with. They knew of when certain conjunctions and events would occur in the heavens, and in many cases they even designed the likeness on earth to conform to it. But as millennia has gone by, that knowledge is extinct. Uh, you guys don't even know about it. Astronomers are only aware of it having occurred anciently, but they laugh it off. And yet, I just, I stand all amazed literally as I watch the signs in the heavens as supposedly nobody else knows who's assigned to each of the various planets and yet like I said I stand all amazed it's am amazing I, I can't think of another word to describe it. it it brings me to tears of joy literally as I'm about to tear up right now. And so, yes, tonight, tomorrow morning, is a sign in the heavens. And that's why I'm submitting my email. Because I want to make sure that it's fulfilled, even if my email is not the fulfillment. I don't know if you understand that. Because, uh, Thursday and Friday were also signs. The moon was with Jupiter on Thursday, and on Friday it was with Saturn. I've already identified Saturn 
with the judge in the federal cases, in my federal case, the previous one. Because, as the signs occurred, the likeness on earth corresponded with the meaning. That's how I knew. They were saying, no, dismissed, as Saturn was right before the goat beast's mouth. So I knew. <laughs> and then there was the, the uh, it was an eclipse, lunar eclipse. And I was like, oh crap, why didn't somebody tell me? That messes up the whole intended likeness of things on Earth that I was thinking was going to happen. Because it was supposed to be a full moon with that sign. And nope, it was actually an eclipse. Which completely alters the meaning of the sign. And sure enough, the likeness on Earth corresponded with the actual sign in heaven. Yeah. Because I can't see lunar eclipses on my stellarium. I can only see solar eclipses if I put it the location in the right place. So, for example, the, the one that the Egyptians knew of many millennia ago. I can't emphasize many enough for you without going into details. Let's just say the pyramids of Giza are much older than they're claimed. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, well, yeah, much older. But, uh, uh, t -t 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 -t. so, this is something that I pay very close attention to. Because I only knew of it as I was taught that the ancients believed in it and conformed to it to make things happen in accordance with the signs. Little did I know that they knew of what was going to happen. Now, yes, the Illuminati know all about this. The Smiths knew all about this, obviously. And that's why the Book of Mormon was dug up or retrieved on the night that it was because of a sign in the heaven that night and other events they were paying very close attention I just did the one about the temple Kirtland Temple where Moses and Elijah come I did a video going over the signs in the heavens during that time. And so, yes, their holiness to the Lord parchment is a star chart. They were big in astronomy. Not astrology, astronomy of the ancients in which the signs have likenesses of things on the earth. And like I said, I stand all amazed. Because uh, either the Illuminati are purposely knowing of the signs and their meanings and are just refusing to educate the rest of us. And so they're purposely fulfilling the likeness of things on earth. Or, holy crap, I stand all amazed. And there have been things that I've checked for, like the judges in my case, that shouldn't have known about this, and yet they conform to it. Creepy. Wild. And so, uh, even Mormons. Yes, you guys, collectively, are conforming. And I know you don't know. <laughs> because guess which planet you represent. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. There are five visible planets to choose from. Jupiter is not the one. 
Saturn, I've already revealed, is the judge. And I've already revealed the identity of uh, Mars and Mercury. So, yes, Venus. The Lucifer symbol. So, I, like I said, I still am desperately trying to figure out how they knew to know. It just is weird. But, like I said, I can't know exactly what is the fulfillment of the likeness of things on Earth until it happens. I can make an educated guess based on the past three years of experience now. And I've been correct, generally. But specifically, not until the day comes. And not every sign happens on the day. The likeness doesn't necessarily happen on the day. Because remember, the sign on the 21st of August 2017, that was just the starting sign. We have three days of darkness, don't we? We've now had two. It's a time frame of occurrence of events in the likeness of things on the earth. The third being on 8 April 2024. And uh, as I tell you things such as it's now the Jewish New Year uh, 5781 that means that it's according to the Jewish calendar it's now 3,333 days since the Exodus. The Smiths would have known about that. They knew the date when the coronavirus would strike. When the exodus would occur and the correct New Year. Not the New Year during the Passover. The New Year after the Passover during the exodus. The Bible author messed up on that. And so he only had a bib as the New Year, which is the religious New Year uh, currently of the Jews, which is now called Nisan, Nisan, which is Semitic Babylonian because they were taken captive into Babylon. And uh, it's actually the civil New Year. And uh, you'll never, well, I've told you, I've done the videos. 21st of August, 2017 was also the ancient Egyptian religious New Year. And so I haven't been checking because the guy didn't publish a book, but I'm pretty sure you just take the information of the day and correspond it to the day of the, their religious calendar, which is 360 days, and thus an additional month uh, every so often. And I've got that additional month year uh, of, in the volumes. And so I, it's, it's just a matter of doing the extra work to have a calendar system of 360 days corresponding with our calendar system. Uh, to line up and then go through which feast was celebrated on which day because the Egyptians didn't have a Sabbath day that was Babylon and the Jews therefore did not have a Sabbath day until after Babylon so it wasn't Moses oops another error in the Bible it's not part of the Ten Commandments. Every day is the Sabbath day. So, yeah, lots of changes needed. But, uh, 
I mean, this is wild stuff. Because like I said, you guys aren't knowingly conforming to the likeness of things on the earth in accordance with the signs. You guys don't even know about the signs. <laughs> so, yeah, I know uh, that there's something weird going on that's beyond my comprehension at the moment. And I'm still trying to figure it out. And yet, the ancient Egyptians knew. They knew. Not just the signs of when they would occur and where they would occur for specific signs like eclipses. Because eclipses don't happen all over the world. The conjunctions do of uh, planets in a constellation. Uh, it just goes around the Earth so that everybody sees it together. And so, yes, the sign of the Son of Man was seen by all the world as prophesied. That's how it's seen by everyone. It's not an eclipse. It's the 23rd of September, 2017. Seen by everyone who knew to look. For those of you who didn't know to look, it came as a thief in the night. <gasps> Wait a minute. That's in Scripture as a prophecy. See, these things are being fulfilled, guys. You need to go back over your, your Scriptures in regards to the latter-day signs and events that are supposed to occur and the fulfillment of various prophecies. Because, like, the one about... Uh, People will want the rocks to fall upon them. I did the video the other day. Ali Velshi did his video, or did his show, uh, filling in for, uh, I believe it was the night he filled in for Brian Williams. Uh, he ended his show going over the asteroid that passed us by. And I did the video of that asteroid that passed us by, and then he went and did his video, or his show, talking about it, and said there were people who had bumper stickers, and were all tweeting about just have them hit us and get it over with. Thus, biblical prophecy fulfilled, as I've discussed. It is wild. Mormons are fulfilling the prophecy of a Bible, a Bible, we have a Bible and need no more Bible. Aren't you Mormons? A quad, a quad. We have a quad and we need no more quad. Thank you, President Benson. In his first presidency statement, why we will not have any other new scriptures added. So, I mean, this is wild stuff, guys. If you're going to ignore me, you do so at your own peril of being a foolish virgin. Because the time for production and of evidence and, and confirmation and, and replication and all that of fruit of, uh, of the word, it, it's pretty much too late now. And you're not going to be able to live on borrowed light, which is just faith alone. So, yeah, my ex reached out again last night, uh, wanting me to call her. Her, She said four of her family have come down with coronavirus. And uh, I emailed back. You only have three kids, silly. <laughs> so she'll throw in aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews, sisters, dogs, pets. But uh, now, <sighs> really not much else to say, guys. You just pay attention. Because nobody else will teach you this stuff. Nobody else will help guide you and warn you about this stuff. Amos 3.7. Supposed to be Nelson, right? Or at least 
any of the prophets, right? Nope. They're not doing it. And so either they don't know or they know but they're not quite sure how it works because they don't know. <coughs> there was this guy who sent the 70 a CES letter informing them of his concern of signs in the heavens that have been occurring in correspondence with the likeness of things on the earth. <laughs> and so the church then changed their Wikipedia page on the 70 as I did the video the other day again. So, yeah, they are aware and they are paranoid of it, but they're clueless as to how it works and how to interpret the signs because they don't believe them. You know, I heard hearsay that uh, Hinckley was involved in astronomy and the signs in the heavens. You can't trust Mormon hearsay. <laughs> yeah, end up with guys like you, Pacer, who thinks I'm a threat and had a uh, kill list. <laughs> Dear God, what a dumbass. But I told him. Go ask Lester the child molester, former bishop, former counselor in the stake presidency, Nelson, about his experience in flashing little kids and how he laughs about it. I doubt he will. I can't find him on YouTube. He's gone. And I have nothing to uh, identify him through any of my email content because when I hold uh, all comments for review it doesn't show up on my uh, Gmail as uh, regular comments would show up on my Gmail and yeah, nobody's answered or, or uh, replied to the video I did about what is it that I specifically did wrong to deserve the abuse by Mormons. I'm still waiting for somebody to watch that video and go, Oh, I'll tell you, Travis. <laughs> still waiting. Again, I'm a pro Joseph Smith, anti Brigham Young, Mormon. And uh, ex Mormons are a little confused too, because they fell victim to the Brighamites, got deceived by them and they're still thinking in those terms of Brighamite religion for Joseph Smith. No. Brigham changed everything. Everything. There is, I can't think of anything that's the same. He even changed God. <laughs> yeah, Adam is Heavenly Father. <laughs> what do you mean you don't disagree with me, he, uh, Orson Hyde? Down the rank you go. John Taylor will now be my successor. <laughs> <laughs>